Hey, everybody, welcome back to the U.S. Super Yacht Association Update USSA. I'm very excited to have a group of our international guests. And I know you're going to, in Seattle, are going to say international and U.S. Super Yacht. How does that work? Well, here at the U.S. Super Yacht Association, we don't just represent the United States. We have members in 25 different countries all over the world. And what we're finding is a new trend of big yachts moving west um, through the Panama Canal and heading and spending time on the West Coast. So I thought it would be important to all the listeners at the Seattle Boat Show to get a sense for what's happening on the rest of that Western coast from all the way down in Antarctica, all the way up to Mexico in the Southern border with the United States. So um, hang on because we got some exciting guests coming up here all the way from South America and uh, Carlos Miquel, a good friend of many years, who's the global and marketing sales director for SASIS, which is South American Yacht, Super Yacht Support and Patagonian Antica Antarctica Yacht Charters. Okay, you say that five times fast and you get a cookie for sure. So Carlos represents all these different areas in the very southern tip of the of the south of the of that particular continent. And he has a major specialty from all things yachting to wine and everything in between. And I'm very excited, as well as vice chairman of the, Amer uh, the Association of Yacht Support Services. So if there are big yachts involved, Carlos knows how to get service to them. So Carlos, take it away. Thank you, Kitty. And sorry about those long company names. So they're as long as our country. That's our Chilean tradition. We make long names. <laughs> And great wine, by the way. <laughs> and good wine. But, uh, well, thank you, first of all, for having us and for uh, being able to be part of uh, the Seattle show. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to attend in, in person sometime soon. We all miss that, I think. Uh, but to, just to give you an, an update, uh, we are in what would normally be the middle of our season, both for Patagonia and for Antarctica. Those are the two main goals. Uh, destinations when people visit uh, Chile and then move on to uh, Antarctica. We had, have had a very, very, um, you know, small season this year. A lot of yachts that intended to come this year have postponed for next year. Uh, for us, it's a bit different because the logistics are more complicated. And although Patagonia could be a very remote place that has its advantages, the problem is that it takes you a minimum of about 20, 20 days to get there from, for example, the Panama Canal. So by the time that you get there, the regulations could have changed. So that, that has been our biggest uh, challenge this year. And uh, we, Chile is open. Chile is under, you know, a, a pretty strict COVID uh, um, system of, uh, to try to diminish uh, the, the cases. Chile at one point had one of the highest per capita in the world. But um, now Chile has a very ambitious plan and it's to vaccinate people. 82% of the population should be vaccinated by uh, the end of the first semester. So the yachts that we have talked to that intended to come this year, they all have postponed for next year. So next year, we actually meaning next season, which will be basically from November of this year, March, April of 2022, should be a monster season if you know, we manage to get things under control. Chile's done a very good job at it. And uh, at the moment for yachts that want to transit through Chile, there's no problem. They can arrive, crews can uh, arrive in Chile and we can do crew changes under special circumstances. And that's what we help with. There's regulations for maritime uh, crew changes because Chile exports a lot. So a lot of ships come, come to us and we need to keep that going. Um, the problem has been that the guests, and at the moment, anybody that goes to Chile as a guest, as, as, as a passenger, or as a traveler, as a tourist, needs to do a 10-day quarantine like any other Chilean as well. And that kind of kills us on a 14-day charter. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> we have tried to change it so that the passengers or the guests could actually, the owners could get on a, a yacht and uh, leave port and count that as your 10 or 14 days but uh, the yacht is actually not allowed to leave the port until the seven days are over, you can do a PCR. And then if it's negative, then you can start moving around the country freely. 
So um, that that's well, what, yeah, I can see that would definitely have impacted your season for this year. So yeah, yeah. But and then what, know, what about very, Antarctica? Antarctica, um, you know, it's it's a long way to get there. The logistics are complex. Um, we've had two big, big research vessels that we supported this year. They just finished. Um, they went very deep into Antarctica. Uh, the problem with Antarctica is what scared some people away this year is that you don't have the amount of vessels there, both commercial and private, that usually are there to help each other in case of an emergency. So that's one of the additional factors that you have in Antarctica is your support system if something were to go wrong. So, so that's something that, uh, you know, uh, worried some, some of the potential uh, um, yachts that wanted to go there. But we're confident that, you know, worldwide the situation is going to be better by the end of this year. And that should give us a very good season next year. So we're very optimistic. And what I'm seeing is the trend for more big yachts going west is actually continuing to grow. And we've spoken with a lot of our of our fellow members in the United States side, and they're seeing an increase as well on the west coast of the United States. So that's that's a good sign for everybody. Because once we get in on that coast, they're typically going to stay for several seasons. And since now is not typically a season you'd think about spending, um, because you guys are opposite from many places in the north. So uh, exactly. so that's great. And we're, we're excited to have you guys here and hopefully that uh, that you guys hit that very aggressive goal of having so many people uh, who are, I mean, uh, vaccinated so quickly. So that's that's great news. So it's going to be key and I think it's going to be a game changer for everyone. And if other countries can also achieve that, then it's going to help the overall travel, global travel situation. Have you found that COVID has impacted some of your wine industry or any of the production in that? We're seeing that in other countries in Italy and France and um, some in Washington state as well that because of COVID, it's kind of also impacted that. Because I know well, some of my yachts are saying some of my wines getting kind of hard to find. Well, uh, distribution is an issue, but you know, it all starts in the vineyard. And the biggest problem was to uh, have the people available to harvest and to work in the in the in the winery during COVID. So what one winery that I know did actually last year, last March, is that they uh, stayed in the winery for a whole month. They slept there so that they would not have to come in and out of the winery. So they left their families, everything, their wives, the kids, <laughs> to make wine. So I would say that's pretty passionate. It shows a lot of commitment. Definitely. And, uh, uh, this year, you know, harvest in the Southern Hemisphere comes now in March, April. So we'll have to see what, what happens if they do it again. But yeah, people are, are drinking more wine, but less expensive wine. <laughs> That's good. Well, actually, we saw that a lot with the yachting charter side, whereas vessels were a lot of the owners had chosen to stay on board their yachts and use their yachts as an escape so that the crews were the normal crew transitions or the crew changeovers that would allow you to have a couple months off weren't happening. And so there has been a lot of very exhaustive yacht crew members out there that are, that are really, really uh, intensely affected by this as well. well. That, so that, uh, that happened to us uh, this past season, the 2019-20 season, where usually yachts leave Chile in, in March, April. But we had some that arrived in February, March, and then, you know, COVID hit, started hitting the world and places started to shut down. So we actually had a very long season <laughs> with yachts that stayed until June and July when it's already winter in most of the places in, in, you know, in Chile from Santiago South. So it was a very unusual, um, you know, season in that aspect that yachts stayed longer than ever because they just didn't have a place to go or the same as coming to Chile if it takes you 20 days to get anywhere, the regulations- You're gonna just stay. <laughs> exactly, so better stay, have some Chilean wine and enjoy it, you know? There you no go. Complaint. They all loved it. That's awesome. Well, we're finding a lot of this very similar things here where um, travel to the normal corridors between the US and Europe has been very interrupted because of a lot of the countries in Europe's being on much stricter lockdown that a lot of the yachts just chose to stay here in the United States. So. But we're going to stay south and we're going to move a little bit north of Carlos. 
um, to the Marina Coast Peru. I'm very excited that this project is just still getting off the ground, but I thought it was important that our uh, our listeners up there and are watching in uh, Seattle area, if you can add this to your destination list, for sure Peru is on my bucket list as I've been selling uh, my friends down there at Marina Coast Peru. But please join me in welcoming Sergio Yubisic and Antonella Bertello from Marina Coast Peru to talk about a little bit about what's coming and what how exciting this is to expand some of that, what, what Carlos was saying that, you know, there's not a lot in between and now what they have another place to stop in Peru. Who wants to start? Yes. Well, I'll start for a little bit. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody has a very successful show, number one. And thank you for inviting us, Kitty. Uh, Peru is a wonderful country. Uh, we have wine as well as chili and pisco sour uh, and wonderful food. And uh, we are developing, uh, actually building it already, Marina Coast Peru in the north of Peru near Mancora in Punta Sal. It's very close to Ecuador and to the Galapagos Islands. We're 593 nautical miles away from Galapagos. And as we all know, Galapagos doesn't have any marinas and will never have any marinas. So I've been already in contact with a lot of the Galapagos operators and agents because the, we will be the natural place for the boats to go on the way to Galapagos or on the way out, right? Um, very importantly, we also have an aerodrome or a private airport on site that is already fully operating and fully built, uh, which has made travel to the area a lot easier, right? Uh, before, there's three other airports that are kind of nearby, but all of them are at least an hour and a half away. So now the fact that you can be five minutes away from your boat uh, in, you know, in, the, in the very near future uh, or your house or apartment at Marina Coast makes a big difference, right? Uh, demand for the uh, air travel has been fantastic. And I think that one of the most important things and that we're getting constantly is that Marina Coast Peru will become the new, um, the new hotspot in South America because the weather is fantastic 363 to, 60, to 365 days out of the year. So you have a fantastic climate. Um, you know, it might rain a little bit uh, in the afternoons uh, during our rainy season, which is December to April, but not, not enough. I mean, it rains a little bit, clears up, uh, very much like uh, South Florida weather, right? And that's year round. So people just absolutely love it. Uh, we've already had quite a few private jets coming in, especially from Chile, believe it or not. Um, but uh, we're in the last, um, uh, getting the last permit in to make our airport international, which means that you could fly in your jet from Miami directly to Peru in, you know, I would say about four hours. So that is, that will be really fantastic. Um, uh, we have a capacity for uh, over 300 boats, uh, up to 320 feet now uh, at the entrance channel, 18 foot draft in the entrance channel, uh, 12 inside the marina basin. And very importantly, the marina is an inland marina. So that makes it, um, uh, the water inside the marina is gonna be very, very protected from whatever is going outside. Uh, the breakwaters. So that is very important. Um, COVID has affected us. Uh, we're delayed. We thought that we were going to be opening a lot sooner, but Peru, like many places in the world, was in total lockdown from March 15th until June 30th. Complete lockdown. You could only go out for um, services or essential services rather. And um, so that, that has delayed us. We're thinking that the marina will be fully operational by uh, Q1 of, of 2022. Um, and we're hoping that maybe we'll be partially operational by uh, the fourth quarter of, this, of uh, 2021, this year. Uh, Sergio has... Uh, all this came about so quickly, so I don't have like the, the whole um, 
video of the marina or perspective, but Sergio does, so maybe he can add a little bit more to what I've said. Really, you 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 talk about the marina, the the, the complete picture, but uh, I only want to say that uh, our sales uh, are going going very well since uh, uh, September uh, last year. We 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 catch up all all the sales because you know the, the, in COVID we we get down, but uh, right now we are doing well in uh, with sales, and I want to invite everybody to go to our uh, website, marinacosperu.com to see what we have there. And um, Sergio, just to, just to clarify, is it, this is a, um, it's not a transient marina, this is like you're selling the slips as like a condo type of scenario or? Yes, yes, we are selling the slips and also selling apartments and selling lots. We also have a, 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 a ski lagoon. So we have the, 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 the complete mix in, in our marina. But there is, will there be room for boats that, it, as, as Antonella was mentioning, that might just be transiting through and wanting to go to the Galapagos or perhaps of, on down to, uh, uh, to Chile? Of course, we will have uh, room for rent, uh, um, sleeps for rent uh, from, uh, I think, 60 foot to 320 foot. No problem. We don't have and, it. and solid power, strong, elect strong electric power that the boats can be able to plug in and not have to run off generators. No, Absolutely. we will have we have uh, electricity, water, uh, and and also the waste service. Huh? And was fuel fuel services as well? We will have fuel? fuel services. The 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 complete experience in a very good marina. Well, also fantastic. a boatyard, a maintenance boatyard and a ship shop, right? Where you can buy anything that you might need uh, for your boat. Fantastic. Well, we can't wait to see more pictures and uh, we'll have you guys back on. Hopefully we'll be able to continue to do these updates for the industry and our membership um, as well as we go forward because, the, you know, with, we're definitely in a, brand, in a brand new world, as they say. So Absolutely. Uh, and Peru is open at the moment for tourism. Uh, the Peruvian authorities do require something very similar to what's happening in New York. You need to take a COVID test three days before you get to Peru. And once you get there, uh, basically, you can have a test uh, four days afterwards. And if you are clear, you're free to go. If not, you need to quarantine for 14 days. Great. Well, we'll keep, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. And we do update our website on the U.S. Super Yacht Association website that I'll get updates from all of our guests as we go along. So thank you guys so much for joining us here today. We're going to continue to move up the, the coast. Now we're heading into Central America and into like one of my favorite spots. Um, is uh, Marina Pes Vela and the southern, somewhat southern, not as far south as Golfito, but you know, fairly in the maybe, I guess, in the middle of that beautiful country. And we have, have uh, the general manager, Jeff Duchenau. Did I pronounce it right, Jeff? That's fine, Duchenau. yeah, Duchenau. Okay. It's like, uh, so, so Jeff, tell us a little about what's happening in Costa Rica. So, Kitty, first I'd say, how exciting is this? Just that we're not even over the equator yet. And how exciting is this West Coast to become, right? You're starting down in yes. Chile, Peru, you go to the Galapagos, and then you swing by Panama and then Costa Rica. And we still got the rest of the, the equator north to go. Well, so, that's our plan. It's like once we get, you know, once we keep them on this side, they're going to stay and they're going to keep hopefully spending time between your countries down there and then the United States. So, uh, we're definitely seeing that trend and we're happy to see that you guys are continuing to grow and uh, expand your, your facilities down there. So tell us, how, what's, what's happening in Costa Rica? Yeah, I think for the first thing that people need to know about Costa Rica, there's five touristic marinas on the Pacific coast. So it's not just Marina Pezel, there's five of us operating here, all with full infrastructure, all selling fuel. I mean, it's just a lot of places and a lot of choices and each one's kind of got its own little a specialty, et cetera. And it's, it's a beautiful place. Uh, they can all take boats basically up to 150 feet. And then our two largest marinas, which is Papagayo in the north and Golfito in the south, they can take vessels up to 300 feet. So there's really good infrastructure. Uh, we also have a boat yard as well. So good to know there's a couple of boat yards kind of popping up along the, the, the southern Pacific um, coastline anyway. So, so we have a 200 ton travel lift at Marina Pez Vela. So always good for boats that need to be hauled out under 200 tons. Um, 
So anyway, that's the infrastructure. So it's important to know that. I think as far as COVID goes, um, certainly this 20, the second half of 2020 and into 2021 has been better for Costa Rica. Uh, there are no longer restrictions to come into the country. So if you come in by air or come in by sea, there are no restrictions, there are no quarantine, there are no testing requirements. But the good thing is Costa Rica has 130 testing labs all around the country, including at all the marinas, um, to do COVID testing, uh, PCR and antigen testing for your onward travel or for your return travel. So that's always an important piece of the puzzle for people to know if there's good COVID and, testing. And, but uh, the good thing is that Costa Rica has almost always been known for quality health care um, from a lot of different aspects and, uh, you know, and good services have been taking care of their people there. So that's good to hear that the testing labs are readily available and easy to get to. So that's fantastic. A quick story tying Chile and Costa Rica together. It was December 23rd and we had our, our, our DHL plane arrive from Belgium with the first vaccines. And it stopped in Costa Rica, dropped off the vaccines and then headed on to Chile. So that was the DHL plane. So I mean, Chile and Costa Rica in December we're already vaccinating, which is great. So I think both countries have a real good chance to have, you know, at least half the population vaccinated by the first semester. So that's that's really good news for the overall COVID situation. And but have you seen an increase in the in the number of vessels? I mean, has there been a lot of traffic? And I understand there's some really exciting news that we can cross our fingers about, hopefully with regards to charter and luxury charter yachts in Costa Rica. So yeah, I think we had a story similar to, to Carlos explaining Chile. I mean, a lot of boats kind of got stuck in Costa Rica in the middle of our high season, which is usually you know, January to, to April, which is our best weather time. Um, and those boats basically stayed on through the summer because there wasn't a lot of places to go. Um, so yeah, we have reservations coming in. Certainly it hasn't been as strong as previous years, but we, we, we knew that was going to be a case. But certainly boats coming and going, which is, which is good, which is what we want. So we're excited about, about what's coming. And yes, and Kitty, you've hit on it. Um, you know, we've been working on a new luxury charter law for Costa Rica for about three years. The whole Costa Rica Marina Association has been working on this. That's one of those things, you know, you look back at COVID and, you know, so many difficult, you know, disappointing things, but yet, you know, some bright lights of hope with this whole COVID situation. And one of those good things that came about was, you know, this Marina law all of a sudden got, got brought to the, to the forefront of, of basically a big recovery package for Costa Rica's tourism industry. So we will have, it's just came out of committee uh, maybe even by the time people are actually watching this at the boat show, this may have already been approved, but we have a marina luxury charter law, which basically means now you can always come to Costa Rica with your private vessel and, and, and private use of your vessel, but you couldn't come here if you were not Costa Rican flag and be hired for charter. It was kind of these really- And that's to... not a real common yacht flag registry. No, right. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not like Cayman Islands or Marshall Islands or you know it's not one of those things that you see the Costa Rican yacht flag registry all over the world so it, it actually made this really an easy debate with with the Congress because we're like guys right. there's only like three vessels over a hundred feet with a Costa Rica flag so I mean yeah. this is kind of a, a, a no-brainer that'll um, be a, a big game changer for Costa Rica and that's good it's to exciting. hear so it's, it's 24 so the three big things of this law that's important for people to realize so 24 meters are up will be allowed to charter in Costa Rica. So anything above 24 meters. Um, at the same time, you get the uh, temporary import status, uh, which was limited to 90 days, for, again, for strange reasons in Costa Rica. That's getting changed and it'll now be a two year temporary input. Wow. Just, you will, um, you'll renew every 90 days. You can actually keep the vessel here for up to two years, um, which would be great to keep people who, who like what they see and want to stay a little longer before going on to their next destination. So. Because so many, so much like all the rest of those beautiful countries down there, the diversity in your countries from north to south is so incredibly extreme. It, it's impossible to spend just two weeks and really get a sense for the essence of your countries and what they have to offer for traveling, for a traveling yachtsman. So we're trying to kind of help spread the word to say, you know, plan to spend a couple of years on this coast and really take in all the, you know, that Costa Rica, the Mexico, that Peru, Chile, Antarctica, uh, the Galapagos have to offer and really be able to see it in a new and exciting way. And that's, uh, that's, that's a very, that's a great compelling story to hear what you guys are doing down there. And Washington State is also working on a potential charter uh, law change up there. So that'll be a good 
further incentive to allow boats to stay and spend time and be able to charter their vessels once people get past some of the fear of COVID. So, well, congratulations, Jeff. We're excited to have you there. And thank you again for all of your support at the U.S. Super Yacht Association. And for those of you who've never been down in those areas, the fishing is phenomenal. So, so, uh, and last but certainly not least, and I, and I, I feel badly, but it's like a huge country and impacts so much of everything we do and he's been a, a dear friend to the association and the industry for many years um uh, please welcome my friend gabriel lee from marina costa baja in mexico and he's also with the mexico marina association so but uh, gabriel has so much to offer from every aspect of the of the mexican waters and is, has been like i said a dear supporter and friend of the industry gabriel talk to me about what's happening in mexico gracias kitty ¿Inglés o español? En inglés, por favor. Ok, claro que sí. Con mucho gusto. Claro que sí. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you all. Uh, thank you for your kind words, Kitty. Uh, actually, it's going to be close to 20 years now in the industry. Time does fly pretty fast. 16 years here in Costa Baja in La Paz, uh, in the tip of the Baja Peninsula on the Sea of Cortez side, and three and a half years in Ensenada, my hometown, on the Pacific side. Having said that, I mean, Mexico has to offer 6,000 nautical miles of, of, of waterfront. Uh, and, and the diversity is just amazing. I mean, you just mentioned it. I mean, every country has its own charm, its own magic. And I know every country in itself has its own districts or states or, or regions. I mean, the Pacific side, uh, just shy of 7,000 nautical miles and 3,000 in the um, Gulf of Mexico on the, on the Caribbean side. Uh, Mexico is widely open, no restrictions, but yes, there's a lot of local restrictions depending on, on, on each state, which means that we're doing this joint effort, not just in the industry, but in like every other country, to keep this pandemic uh, low. Uh, our season, well, here in La Paz, it, uh, we did have a small little impact last spring. Uh, it picked up by the end of the year, and right now we're, we're just seeing these mega yachts and, and the charter business pick up uh, with its own uh, restrictions. When I say restrictions, it's not a restriction, recommendation, let's put it that way. Uh, Mexico travel is active. Uh, being so close to the U.S., I mean, we got daily flights to Cabo San Lucas, our closest uh, international port, on a daily basis. Uh, here we have two a week coming now from Dallas, that's the new international flight to La Paz. And we have seen the crew, as you mentioned, a little bit stressed on how their seasons have been either coming short or expanding or changing or cruising. However, the feeling of being in a clean environment and uh, it's out there. I mean, uh, yes, some home uh, vessel owners and some captains had delayed their arrival shifted a little bit and there's a little bit of everything uh, our commercial activities here in the marina uh, did go to a technical zero because there were restrictions for a couple of months and now we've as much as we have learned in the last couple of months uh, the restrictions might be apply to how many people are actually allowed on the vessel for commercial activities uh, the marinas in this state of baja uh, and I can say mostly, yep, the whole the whole peninsula did get a little hit of maybe five percent of occupancy in the first couple of months, and but it picked up by the end of the year. Mexico has over thirty five uh, marinas that are in the Marine Association, and we all comply with all the health regulations and all the restrict um, recommendations that the health department gives us. Uh, like uh, Jeff mentioned in Costa Rica, there's multiple labs to do the testing or oh, the whole Mexico Hotel Association is getting uh, together to facilitate any travel restrictions that not only the US nationals, but I understand uh, other countries might uh, request a negative test before boarding their flights. Uh, I can tell you that we're not running short of tequila. We're not. <laughs> Thank anyway, goodness but, for that. <laughs> <laughs> and the mezcal industry and, 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 and the wine industry is picking up in, in, in the peninsula. Uh, fishing is not as good or, or as impressive as it is in, in Costa Rica. But Cabo, Cabo San Lucas can, can debate on who has the, the largest marlins out there. 
I was just going to say, because some, <laughs> some of the world's largest fishing tournaments happen in your country, so. Yes, yes, a tournament. And actually, this past Bisbee's was Bisbee's, a no-show. Yeah. was a no-show. They could not bring one marling on the minimum weight out oh, there, or nobody risked it. I mean, I know there was a couple of teams that said, yeah. Right on the edge. <laughs> right on the edge. There was a lot of catch and release, a lot of catch and release, but uh, the penalties for bringing a, a – uh, Undersized fish, fish. An undersized fish were, were, were pretty steep. So, uh, which I'm not sure if we're going to put that pot of money into the next year's tournament. But It'll just like roll we'll, over and if you come uh, back, we'll, we'll let's be there. put it that way. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I actually started the fishing tournament series at Los Sueños oh, yeah. like, uh, like 20 years ago, I guess. So yeah, so the fishing on the on the Pacific coast is definitely in my blood. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I knew actually knew Bis Mr. Bismi very well, you know, before he uh, before he got out of the biz. He got smart, and got out of the fishing business, and I went back to yachting. So, Sweet. but uh, well, that's good to hear. And you guys are able to charter in Mexico, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. And there's yeah. no no there's major restrictions, restrictions there, there but there's the standard restrictions like in any country you need to have permits you need to have to have insurance both for the crew for the passengers uh, and permits for the natural parks uh, i mean just like uh, the galapagos that's the galapagos or maybe like costa rica mexico has its own restrictions for natural parks uh spiritu santo island uh, here close to la paz up in loreto also the, the part uh, the islands in loreto bay uh the Marietas down by Puerto Vallarta and uh, Socorro Islands where the diving over there is just impressive. I mean, I can go on and go on about I'm, And being a Mexican national, I fear that I don't even know a third of the, of the coast of our country and what every single port has to offer, but we're working on it. As Mexico Marine okay. Association, we're relaunching the website to be certain that it gives out a little bit of what every destination has to offer. In the past, it was just more, un yeah, yeah, it was a, an official website where you have just a contact list and what the association does. Well, we're going to do the next step and, and bring the audience and the potential customers a one-stop site where they can see, why not? Uh, let's cross the canal and then move up the coast and every single option. Stop in Costa Rica. Stop in Costa Rica. <laughs> Pura vida. Pura vida. Keep up. Why not? From Costa Rica, go a little bit, go south, and then up. Yeah, and then we're going to spend some time. But you don't forget about the U.S. and Alaska. No, 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 no. Definitely. And, uh... <laughs> Definitely. Do that, no. do that loop. Exactly. Let's, let's just keep, keep it active. coming. Let's keep them Same. on this side at least. So, uh, yeah. yes, but definitely. there's just so much more we could continue to talk about it and all the exciting opportunities from the yachting perspective that the that the west coast of our of the United States, Central and South America have to offer for all Same. of you guys in the yacht cruising industry. And I mean, I, I, all of these these guys are available on the U.S. Super Yacht Association website. And it's ussuperyacht.com. And it's only one super yacht. But if you have more than one, be, be, you know, you're certainly welcome to bring them all down and enjoy all the fantastic things that every one of these beautiful countries has to offer. And I hope that you all continue to stay safe, stay well, use your yachts, come spend some time on our, on our coasts over here on the West Coast in, in the United States and in, in South and Central America and Mexico. And uh, Peter, I thank you so much and everything that you guys are doing up in the Northwest Marine Trades Association and partnering with us on so many things. We're so happy to have you and happy to have all of you guests here with me today. And I really appreciate all your time and energy. And uh, again, you can find out all the information you need about any of these organizations right on our website at ussuperyacht.com. Thank you so much. And back to you, Peter, in the studio. <laughs>